Hey, hello, and welcome to the show. Oh my gosh, there's so many of me there. There I am. Just one now. Uh, here we go. Hey, welcome. It is time for another episode of JP's Product Pick of the Week. Thank you all so much for stopping by. Uh, we've got some people over in our chats on YouTube, as well as the Discord. I just got distracted because Futari asked, are you mouth beatboxing that live? No. Uh, that would be cool, though. Yes, it is actually Lars. Fantastic mouth drummer, Lars. Uh, what's Lars up to, anyway? He's back there chilling. So, we've got a really uh, hot product pick of the week this week, but before I go there, let me just send you on over to the site if you want to check it out. That is the QR code, and that is the URL for the product pick of the week. We have a tremendous 50% off discount going this week, and you can watch this show inside that product page. So head on over there. And uh, so you know, you don't need a coupon code for this discount. 50% off, just put it in your cart and go. There's nothing else to do other than get it done before the end of the show or before we run out. But I think we have plenty. Uh, I, I heard from Tom, we have plenty of these in stock. So you should be good. Uh, up to 10 you can get, depending on your big, big plans. So... Before I go into any more detail on this, let me have Lady Ada jump back a little bit into the past and tell us all about it. Take it away, Lady Ada. A respin of uh, one of our favorite old products, uh, product 390. One of the first ones we've made that's a really old product ID was our USB DC solar charger. And it's done us very well for many years. But I wanted to upgrade it uh, first up because I wanted to put USB C on it, but I also wanted to see if there's some other chips that had come out in the meantime that could improve uh, the capability of a universal charger. So what I did is uh, I found the BQ24074, put on a breakout board with 2.1 millimeter DC jack, USB type C, uh, two JST outputs. And this is a really nice universal charger. Um, so let me tell you what it can do. You can use any DC power from five volt to 10 volts. So that's higher than our previous breakout, which maxed out at six. So you can go up to 10 volts. Um, you can, uh, it also has input protection up to 28 volts. USB type C connector, uh, makes it easy to, uh, you know, plug in uh, power from any wall adapter or computer. It'll use five volts off of that. Uh, if you want the D plus and D minus pins, those are available also. So you can kind of like chain this into a dev board. Um, the output, there is a charge port. The charge port can charge up to 1.5 amps, which is pretty high. Very handy when you've got one of those uh, 2,000 or 3,000 or even 6,000 milliamp hour batteries. You want to charge it a little faster. This will do 1.5 amp charge rate. You can also set it to 1 amp or 0.5 amp, or if you want, just cut the you know jumpers all together and put in your uh, custom resistor. The output is load shared. So if you, um, you plug in the battery into the charge port, the output port will uh, always have no more than 4.4 volts on it and it will automatically use the USB or DC power if that's available and only supplement it with battery power um, if you end up drawing more current than that's available from DC and USB. So basically, it tries to not drain your battery. If you have a USB or DC plugged in, your load will never be higher than 4.4 volts, so it's good for 3.3 uh, volt uh, linear regulators. It's also good for um, up to five volt boost converters. It's a nice, it's a nice voltage. Um, and uh, you'll have automatic load sharing up to 1.5 amps. Uh, it's got an optional thermistor input if you want to use a thermistor. There's a power good LED, there's a charge LED. Best of all, it works with solar uh, without needing any extra capacitors or anything. It's got a built-in capability to automatically reduce the amount of charge current uh, so that the voltage doesn't collapse. It's like an input uh, dynamic power path thing that's built into this charger chip. So if you use a solar panel, I just plugged one in, it'll automatically draw as much current as it can, basically kind of like a max power point type thing, um, before the voltage dips below 4.5 volts. So you get the most current output. It's nice and stable, doesn't oscillate. So this is a great universal charger. Even though it works with solar, you, can, you don't have to use it with solar. DC power, 9 volt, 5 volt, USB-C, all works with it. So it's like an all-in-one, everything you ever wanted to charger. Yes, that is in fact our product pick of the week. Let me jump down here and 
get one myself to check out. Look at that lovely little guy. Product pick of the week this week. It is the BQ24074 USB DC and solar battery charger. Did I get that name right? 24074. I think I did. Uh, so that's the chip on there. And this is a really great charger for a whole bunch of different uses. So you may not be sure exactly what your needs are going to be for battery charging, and this will probably take care of it. So uh, here I've got a typical LiPoly battery, and what I can do is plug that into the charging side. So there's a, a little indicator on there on the silk screen. This is LiPo. So if I plug this in, this is now ready to be charged over USB. It's got a USB-C on there. Plug it in and it is off and running. It's charging. You can go anywhere from, I think it's uh, four to 10 volts DC. Plug that right into there uh, and it'll go off of DC. So a wall wart or, uh, or some other um, barrel connector that you have going to DC. And then the super, super cool feature of this is of course solar. So here I've got a nice big uh, Voltaic brand solar panel. And it has just been so hot out that it's really nice to know you can, you can at least use that blasted sun for something, which is plug it in and get some solar. Now, I'm not going to get any uh, in here in the workshop, but you can imagine, put that out in the sun, kind of hide this in the shade so you don't overheat things, and this is off and running and charging. Um, so a couple other features I wanted to show. Let me go to a, a down shooter here, and I'll just put a little, little uh, me in the corner. So zoom out just a little bit. Uh, here's a typical setup. Besides using this to charge, you can use this with uh, something like a power boost in order to get 5 volt USB out of it, right? So this is charging, uh, could be, I think this is a 6 volt um, cell, but you can, like I said, go anywhere up to around 10 volts with your input, you'd get five from USB. Uh, it's charging up this battery and this battery wants to give out 3.7. So this second JST connector here allows you to hook up something that wants that 3.7 volts off of the battery. And in this case, I'm gonna plug in one of our little USB power boosts. So this is now converting whatever's coming off that battery or whatever's coming over the um, USB or DC if it's sort of a more stable and better uh, supply than the battery. Um, so it's kind of a continuous supply. And now I can plug some USB whatever into it. So you could charge a phone off of here. Uh, in this case, I've got one of my little Korg uh, NTS-1 synths plugged into here. And so now, right, I've got a USB device. I'm in the sun. Uh, I'm charging. I'm running this off of here. I'm charging the battery, so I'm running off of a stable supply. Um, and then we could come along and say, oh, you know what, let me plug in a USB-C. Come in, grab a USB-C, plug that into there. And now the source isn't the battery, it's actually this USB. Unplug that and you'll notice that whole time my device stayed uh, powered on, so there's no dip there, which is great. Uh, so there's a few other features on here. Let me get a little better uh, camera there. Can unplug that there. Uh, we have, you don't need it, but if you're real paranoid about it, you could put a big charging capacitor there. Uh, and then we have jumpers for choosing your charge rate. So depending on the size and uh, uh, heft of the battery, you can pick different charge rates. So you can charge them faster. It's also got uh, some solder points for a temperature monitor through Mister, so you could put a temperature probe there. And depending on uh, your monitoring situation, you could use a microcontroller to monitor. So let me, uh, let me jump over to the product page again for this. Uh, so you can see here, uh, there it is right now, $7.48, which is really great for, for a universal charger like this. I'll refresh it, there we go. Uh, if you check out the links and the specs in here, you will get down towards the bottom, of course, a learn guide link because we don't wanna leave you hanging. So if you click on this, this will tell you everything you need to know about the device. Uh, specifications, the pinouts, how to hook it up, how to prep it for use. And you can see there's also uh, some ideas on your panel preparation. So a lot of these panels use a smaller uh, little plug. So we sell a couple of different adapters. This is a little right angle adapter that gives us the uh, solar panel to DC jack that we need. Uh, and there's also a little pigtail version that you can see there on that 
on that site. Whoops, there goes a battery. Uh, depending on the cell, some older ones needed you to, to do a bit of preparation, but I think all the panels that we sell now uh, don't require that. You can plug them directly in. And uh, there's the array of panels that we sell. So uh, you can see there's a, a bunch of different sizes and prices depending on your needs. Probably not going to get, get far with this little uh, 40 milliamp one. Uh, the brand of panel that we sell for a lot of those bigger ones is this one here, Voltaic. And this is a cool site if you're interested in learning more about solar uh, charging and, and sort of in the field operation of your devices. Um, so let's see what else I wanted to do. Um, I did want to show a slightly more advanced use case that I had put together. So let me, let me zoom out here uh, and I'll refocus a bit so that we can see this. One moment. There we go. That's pretty close. Uh, so in this use case, I was going directly into the power boost converter. Um, I set up a monitoring version of this and I put it in uh, a little waterproof case. It's kind of disassembled now just so I could get this out to show you today. But the idea with this one is that I'm doing uh, a LiPo charging uh, monitor. So I'll pass my output of the charger into this little monitor. And then you can see I've got a little cutie pie in there along with an OLED so I can uh, get updates about the, the status of the battery. And then I've, I've got a, this is a different power boost here. And instead of a USB plug directly connected to it, I ran a USB plug out of the little cable gland uh, on this waterproof case. And I added a little power switch for the whole thing. So uh, if we plug this in and power this on, you'll see a uh, LiPo gauge on here 4.7, uh, sorry, 4.1 volts and 82% charge. So that's telling me the status of the battery. Uh, and then if we go out in the sun, presumably you'll, if we're not drawing much current from the battery, you'll see that start to uh, go up. And you could get more sophisticated with that, adding other, other uh, types of monitor, including temperature to that. Uh, but all of this, doesn't look it right now, but all of this fits inside of there. And there's a little uh, sort of water resistant top that can go on there. So. With all of that, we get solar panel, a USB pigtail there, and an on-off switch to power on and off the whole device. So let's see if there's any questions in any of our chats here. Sorry, YouTube, I wasn't checking you because you got hidden by a window. Uh, when you say power boost, do you mean power boost 1000 basic? Uh, I'm actually, I have the 500 on here. You could do the 1000, I think, with... Um, as Lamore mentioned, cutting a trace or changing uh, a resistor, you can get a thousand out of that uh, that guy right there. Even though I think it's maybe rated for less, um, I think that works pretty well. Um, yeah, the one I have, I think in both of these cases that I'm using is a 500, but that's actually just because that's what I had on hand. So I think you could you could uh, go up a little higher than that. And there's a really detailed. I'll say if you if you if you want to dig into that more, don't take my word for it. If you head back to the learn guide, there's a uh, this design notes section has a lot of info about um, how this type of chip works for solar charging, and I believe some of the um, minimum and maximum specifications for for voltage and current. Um, so. Yeah, David Dyke found it, the PowerBoost 500 charger. That's the one I'm using right there. Uh, that's obviously going to be slower for charging some devices, but I found even plugging in my uh, iPhone 12 it into that PowerBoost uh, running off of a battery in this solar charger, it was able to charge the phone. Uh, it just wouldn't be as fast as, as uh, a 1000. I think some devices like an iPad just won't charge. They, they require like two amps to even think about it. Uh, so let's see, any other questions? Uh, yeah, that's right, I'll never run out of battery now. Or at least Lars won't. Yes, this is designed for a single cell, uh, single LiPo cell. 
all, all uh, warranties are void if you start hacking your batteries. Be careful with that. All right, good. Okay, so I think that covers it. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions in either of the chats, but if not, uh, we will wrap things up. Oh, hold on, my uh, software got glitchy there for a moment. Stay together with it. All right, hopefully you're still hearing, hearing audio and that didn't go away. Uh, good. So let me see if I can fashion a quick little hanger for this out of one of these cables. I'm always thinking of that a little late. Uh, there we go. So product pick of the week this week, it's the BQ24074 Universal Charger with DC, USB, and solar. That's going to do it for another episode of JP's Product Pick of the Week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please tune in tomorrow for 3D Hangouts and Show and Tell. Ask an Engineer after that. And then on Thursday, I'll have my workshop show. Friday, we'll have Deep Dive uh, with Foamy Guy. So that's going to do it. Thanks, everyone, for stopping by. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.